One of the favorite expressions from my dad is that if there's no margin, there's no mission. In other words, as business people, we've got to make a profit. We've got to make a profit just to sustain ourselves, you know, going from one year to the next so we can reinvest in the business uh, going forward, take advantage of marketplace opportunities. But hopefully there's going to be also some margin there, not just to recapitalize the business for the future, but also to share some of that uh, with other needs within the community. So I, I say to business leaders, let's run successful businesses. We need it. Employees that work for us, they're depending upon us leading uh, successful businesses. But let's also do it with enough meaning and purpose and significance to know that we can also be the institution, the marketplace, one of the great institutions to reinvest back into the community for, uh, for life, for vitality, for overall health as a society and a community. We asked about the genesis of, of the Chick-fil-A business. It goes back to the Dwarf House opening of 1946. But the genesis of that was really my grandmother who operated a boarding house in Southwest Atlanta. And that's where my dad often said he learned how to shut corn, shell peas, and wash dirty dishes. And he worked with his mom there in that kitchen and began to pick up nuances of how to flavor squash and beans and cook roast and chicken and on and on and on. In fact, he says the story about the origination of Chick-fil-A was watching his mother season chicken on Saturday night to be served uh, for Sunday dinner the next day. Uh, but Dad uh, got some generosity genes someplace along the line. In fact, some of the employees made the comment at the Dwarf House that Dad gave away so much food, they wondered if he was going to make a profit because he was giving so much food away. Food is a really wonderful uh, agent of hospitality, of kindness, of care, of concern, and always has been throughout civilization. And we were able to uh, uh, you know, continue to grasp that element of hospitality and graciousness to help people cope and deal with issues and challenges that have gone on in life. We, we just perpetuated that as a family. So our corporate purpose at Chick-fil-A, the highest statement that we have at Chick-fil-A is what we call our Chick-fil-A corporate purpose, to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that's entrusted to us and to have a positive influence on all who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. That's the big overarching uh, why. That's the, that's the stratosphere for us from a philosophical standpoint. But underneath that, we have a, a, a mission statement to be the world's most caring company. And as we thought about that, as we think about that, as we incubate and perpetuate that kind of thinking, what does it mean to be the world's most caring company? We know that really it's the subtleties of a lot of behaviors that consistently happen all over the organization. Embodied by leaders, lived out by leaders, that leadership ripples throughout the whole organization so that customers in drive-through lines in our dining rooms and other places see there's a lot of little things that we do. Well, we know that culture within any organization really drives marketplace performance, that strong cultures, uh, strong cultures that are driven by a strong sense of purpose uh, and significance, uh, that they've been able to define uh, their purpose and calling in a way that begins, is beyond a transaction, that's beyond uh, something on a balance sheet or a profit loss statement that can appeal to the higher purpose of who we are as humanity, as, as citizens. That's what really drives effective leaders in communicating what that purpose is in a meaningful way that everyone can, uh, can identify with it. The articulation of what I just expressed to you, that we want to have a positive influence on people. We want to have a positive influence on our customers that go through those drive-throughs. We want to have a positive influence on those young teenagers that uh, we teach them civility and how to say yes ma'am and no ma'am and my pleasure and so forth. We have a positive influence on our operators and our staff that the whole chain of relationships that are here. Uh, and that really drives us to want to be at our very best. Well, our Chick-fil-A restaurant operators are independent contractors. They're, they're self-employed. 
Uh, we provide the capital for them to, and the brand, all the pieces on the table for that operator. But the operator, uh, she is the individual who's able to pull all that together to make it viable and meaningful for local communities uh, that they may be in. And we are one of the first responders, if you will, uh, in items, times of crisis. During COVID, uh, we were deemed an essential business and we were given special provisions to be able to continue to operate our business. Many of these uh, you know, school systems that were shut down and others, that was the sole social, uh, source of food service for many students, uh, needed other avenues of being able to meet those needs. So we were able to mobilize. In fact, some of our communities through, mobile, through te COVID testing actually asked Chick-fil-A operators, would you please help us expedite the cars so that we can move people as efficiently as possible. So our operators jumped to the rescue. And um, so we were an essential service and uh, it came back as tremendous loyalty uh, that came out of COVID as a result of Chick-fil-A restaurant operators responding so effectively. I love the definition of a restaurant. It's, it's uh, a French word, the genesis of it. It means a place of restoration. And so as we think about how profound that idea is that a restaurant, even cars going through a drive through that we're a place of restoration, not just caloric restoration, but also even emotional restoration. And it's the little moments of kindness, little acts of selflessness that we could do to other people that uh, really begins to, to minister uh, in their life. A couple of years ago, I was going through, I was having a, a busy day, a busy morning. I was going through the Chick-fil-A drive-thru on my way. And I remember as I went through, this lady handed me my sack. And it's such a simple thing. I mean, it's really a little thing. I need to do this as a Chick-fil-A commercial one of these days. But she handed me a food, she looked at me in the eye, and she says, I hope you have a really good day today. And she said it just about like that, with so much sincerity. And it was a nanosecond of time. No cars were backed up behind the counter, behind me. She didn't change my tire. She didn't wash my windshield. Did you need any of that kind? She just simply said, with a lot of sincerity, I hope you have a really good day today. And when I left there, man, I don't know what was in that sack. I don't remember at all what was in it, but I sure remember how she made me feel. And uh, if we can affect and touch people's lives to the little things, then I think we can count our life a success. Well, you know, one of the one of the things that we should as aspire to to have in life is the ability to see what's going on around us. You know, we can see, but do we really see? I know in in 2020, uh, just two years ago, we we that the the, um, the cover. A veil was opened, and we began to see how elements of our society, particularly the African American community, uh, had a, a lot of unseen hardships that that they were dealing with. That I think many other people, including myself, were oblivious to. And so it, it's the it, it's the eyes to see, it's the ears to hear, but it's also the heart that cares. It, it's seen here, but it's also a sense of conviction at the heart that we need to take action. We need to do something about the situation. We need to span the gap. If we've got inequities in our society, in education and medical care, uh, uh, justice, and on and on and on, all these inequities, uh, we need in our generation to step up and by a sense of our own personal moral compass, and our moral convictions that we have uh, to know that we need to stand in the gap and we need to speak out. I love the quote from Martin Luther King that says, we begin to die when we fail to care about things that really matter. And when we see these issues around us, uh, we don't just just to see them or hear about them, but we need to let, does that really resonate? Does that move us? Do we want to, uh, do we see the opportunity that we have to be able to stand in the gap? I, I, I'm all for elected officials, but I'm also really for the private sector that can move a lot faster to stand in the gap to address these issues. Uh, reputation is really a lot of the choices and decisions we make, uh, and not just the, the big things, but the little things that we might do that may go unnoticed. And um, I have observed in leaders that I admire the most 
that it's the uh, the subtleties of their behavior, their conduct, uh, the way they embody the values of generosity by their own personal conduct, that is most inspiring to me. And I hope that at Chick-fil-A and this recognition that we're receiving, I hope that it'll continue to inspire others.